Good morning, and welcome to the virtual service of Whitby Baptist Church. My name is Terry Yoshiki, and I'll be leading the service this morning, as Pastor Ross and his family are on summer vacation. Today, I'm standing at the entranceway of our church building, and if everything goes as planned, we're hopeful that in two weeks on September 12th, we'll be able to gather together to have in-person worship. We will be practicing the proper protocols of social distancing and masking, and we hope that you're able to join us. Uh, if you're not able to be with us, and you, and you perhaps you feel uncomfortable about gathering together, please note that our services will be live-streamed, and we will be recording them. In the meantime, we wait, uh, and we gather together virtually, so we're glad that you can join us today as we worship, praise, as we discern God's leading through His Word. Thank you for joining us. Let's begin in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for watching over us and for blessing us in so many ways. We thank you that even virtually we can meet together. We know that wherever we are, that your spirit is with us. Uh, And it could be at home. uh, It could be somewhere on a campground. Um, Thank you uh, that you have the power to be with us wherever we go and in whatever we're doing. So continue to watch over us. Bless us this day as we look into your word, open up our hearts and our minds to your leading and to your spirit, and may it encourage and enliven us all to more closely follow you. Thank you again for your blessings, and we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
praises to his name forever. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will. He abides with us and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey not a shadow can rise not a cloud in the skies but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust. burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay, not a grief nor a loss, nor a frown or a cross, but it's blessed During anxious or stressful times in my life, or just the need sometimes to rest and relax and contemplate, I have found that biblical verses that I memorized in my youth and songs that we used to sing in youth group, bringing me great comfort and rest. I've discovered that the seeds of my early years have given me a solid foundation upon which I can live my life to its fullest. The pandemic has been on all our minds for what almost seems like an eternity. Margo and I were so looking forward to our Alaskan cruise on June <clears throat> with some good friends flying out of Toronto on June 6, 2020, landing in Anchorage and then cruising down the west coast of BC. Excursion trips were all booked and we were in great anticipation of the venture. And I, of course, had mapped out all the different eating opportunities, aboard ship and off the ship. <clears throat> then in mid-March, the directive was received to essentially cancel and in effect close any venues where people could gather and intermingle. COVID-19 was officially recognized in Canada and the shutdown had begun. And while we did receive full refunds regarding our crews, we along with our friends were greatly disappointed and now dealing with the uncertainty of how long the restrictions on gathering would last. 
Do you remember those first few months? There was literally nowhere to go and nothing to do. From a public venue perspective, and even privately, we were encouraged not to travel and to stop family gatherings. Essential services, such as grocery shopping, restricted the number of shoppers, and there are always lineups, and in many instances, a shortage of essential products, like toilet paper. We were encouraged to use online methods. Many of us ordered our food and had it delivered to our porches. And following suggested protocol at the time, we would disinfect any bags and even the actual groceries to ensure we did not bring any viruses into our homes. Literally, we were isolated in our homes and apartments. Looking back in hindsight, I should have invested in packaging and delivery companies and in media entities like Netflix and Amazon Prime. <clears throat> As COVID spread and the number of infections, hospitalizations, and deaths increased, especially those in long-term care homes, we all wondered where, when, and even if it would all ever end and things would return to normal. As days crept into weeks and then months, we could scarcely believe that some experts were predicting continually increases in cases and the possibilities of second and third waves. Summertime 2020 was no vacation at all. Schools went to virtual learning, and the usually much-anticipated family gatherings of Thanksgiving and Christmas were all in jeopardy and, in fact, in reality, became jeopardized. And now today, even as some restrictions have lifted, cases are on the rise again. The fourth wave of the Delta variant has arrived, and the possibilities of increased lockdowns looms. How are you handling all of this? Amidst the turmoil and uncertainty, there is hope, and we are reminded as Christians that we are standing on a firm foundation, a foundation that does not yield, nor does it waver or collapse, and in fact supports us through all the trials and tribulations of life. As I share with you this morning, I do realize that my perspective comes from a life that is now 72 years young, hard to believe, as they say, but does not matter when you came to stand on that foundation. Young or old, it is unchanging and firm. Even during the pandemic, we discovered that kindness, courage, togetherness, hope, and the human spirit help us all to get through life's challenges. How to live during COVID? This is the message of Romans 12, 9-18. Hear now the word of God from Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 18. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay in anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. May God bless this reading to us. I was going to continue my talk outside, but the sounds of thunder and the few drops of rain that fell have prompted me to come inside. The pandemic has not been easy for any of us. As it played out over the last year and a half, there were times when I faltered, and in one instance did something totally out of character. Procrastination, which has always been a challenge for me, took over in this instance as I rationalized that I can leave that item until tomorrow. Nothing is happening today, and for that matter, any day soon. <clears throat> the worst part of it was that I actually lied to a congregation, not ours, but I told them a story that I had filed a certain document but had not yet actually filed it. I knew there was, I knew there was so-called time to file, 
But still, to lie about it, that was wrong. I was ashamed, and hopefully, after confessing that transgression, I've been forgiven. But that singular incident taught me a valuable lesson. In my late teens and early 20s, I was in exploration in the Arctic and in many of the northern parts of Canada's provinces. There were times when the isolation and the job challenges, the heat, the cold, bugs, crazy workmates, gave me times and feelings of loneliness, frustration, impatience, and sometimes anger. One evening after a particularly long day, and while camped near a river in northern Alberta, I happened to open my small companion Bible, and it fell open to Psalm 46 and 10, Be still and know that I am God. It brought instant joy and encouragement to my spirit, and I never forgot that verse. In fact, I took a picture of the flowing river and had it framed with that verse inscribed on the frame. That same verse came to me after my incident with the other church, which was leaving me in a turmoil and restlessness at the thought of my transgression. You see, the verse, although it calls us to be still, does not mean to just be quiet before the Lord. The psalmist, who is thought to have penned that verse, penned it during a time of conflict, or possibly war. In that light, the tone of the, ver- ver- the, tone of the verse is to stop striving, stop fighting. Stop trying to do things on your own. Stop stressing and wake up. I am the Lord. I am your refuge and strength. In our hectic world, it's been stated that we could have upwards of 50,000 thoughts a day. And some of those thoughts are not always pretty. You know the ones. I can't believe I messed up. I'm an idiot. I'm too, it's too hard. I'm a failure. I'm a fraud. I'm too young or I'm too old. The world asks us to be busy, but God asks us to be still, to stop striving so much and instead come to know him and receive his love, peace, and forgiveness and guidance. In verse 2 of Psalm 46, it speaks to the earth giving way and mountains falling into the sea, but God is our foundation and ever-present help. He does not give way to the forces of nature, or to anything for that matter. It was that way back in 1967, when I was just a new Christian sitting by the riverbank. And it was that way in 2020, when God was still a firm foundation for my anxieties. And so I was reminded to stop trying to do too much on my own, but to take the time to listen, and then move into action where he leads, not where I think I should be. In my preteen years at our former church, Mimco Baptist, uh, we organized, there was an organization, uh, a club for young boys called Tyros. I think it was originally a ministry created by United Church to reach out to and disciple young boys as they entered their teen years. The Tyro group met each week and we had a secret handshake, uh, which was like this, and a specially coded word, essentially a password in today's language. It was Sifith, Sifith, mostly unpronounceable, but a lot of fun as we maneuvered through the secret handshake and the password, which was, uh, when, which was, when spoken, was more like a spit, Sifith, Sifith. Well, Sifith was taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and be strong. Stand firm in the faith. S-F-I-T-F, Sifith. Obviously, I've never forgotten that verse, but it took me a decade or so to realize its true meaning. And again, it was through my experiences in exploration, which took place from the time I was 18 until I turned 22. As a young man away from home, and typically in camps and circumstances, where I was usually the youngest worker, there were challenges, mental, spiritual, and physical. It was an environment ripe with temptations, the yearning to be accepted, periods of anxiety, and even physical things, uh, physical challenges, encountering a wolf pack, crash landing in the high Arctic in a helicopter, emergency landing on a road in rural Alberta, spending an unexpected lonely night in the wilderness of northern Saskatchewan 
far from the main camp, wavering between following God and wanting to follow the world. God led me through all these challenges and reminded me to stand firm in my faith. And during the pandemic, there are also moments of doubt, anxieties, the loss of family members, isolation, what will the new normal be? Not being able to meet together were all faith challenging. But like those many years ago, Sephith did mean everything. Stand firm in the faith. When your faith is challenged, remember that you stand on the rock of Jesus Christ. How firm a foundation. His word is definitive and true. God has given us a spiritual armor to help us stand, and he leads us out of that miry place of doubt and confusion to give us that place to stand. While going through the pandemic, we had a Christian friend who was asked why she seemed so calm in comparison to some of her other friends. A friend who actually asked the question, answered the question, surmising that she thought it was because she was a Christian. As Christians, we are called to a certain standard, a new way of life, and much of that way is found in today's scripture lesson. Verse 9 calls us to hate evil and cling to what is good. Were and are you able, even today, to think how God has blessed you during the pandemic, to cling to what is good? Have you remained positive in your attitude to others and your circumstances? Or do you still get upset to the shoppers who don't understand what the arrows on the floor mean? In verse 10, we are to be devoted to one another, honoring, our, honoring others above ourselves. Jesus personified this attitude. And during the pandemic, I think this verse was especially applicable to couples, isolated with each other. Did we do the best we could in honoring each other, looking to put the needs and the wishes of our spouse above our own? It's something that I need to work on, and it's not too late yet. Verse 12 was especially important during the pandemic and all the time. We are to be joyful, We have to have a hope in Christ enabling us to handle affliction with patience, and faithful prayer helps to keep us in the proper mindset. As we pray and as we have our devotions each day, we're pointed towards Jesus, pointed towards our God, who directs and leads us. And you have to do that every day so that you can hear his voice. And even during the most trying times of the pandemic, I trust and hope we are all able to continue to share with those in need, to practice hospitality even though we could not physically meet. We could still drop off food and masks or make a friendly phone call or send an encouraging note. Electronically, we were still able to share the good news and be supportive of each other, whether it was times of celebration or whether it was times of grieving. And it was and is amazing that just when you think it's difficult to know your neighbors, The pandemic actually made it easier to connect with them. Six feet apart, of course, but we all had nowhere to go, and we would argue that we were all in the same bubble. As restrictions lifted, six of our neighbors had gathered in the driveway just to reconnect and talk. It started to rain, and not one person made a move to head inside until it really started to pour, and only then did we move inside move into our own homes, and reluctantly, we parted. We lived in harmony with each other, and for the most part, at peace. There were some in every neighborhood, as was the case in ours, where a neighbor scoffed at the medical experts and called the pandemic a hoax. But even with them, we practiced harmony. We just agreed to disagree. And so I'm of the mind that if we we're able to practice a scripture passage in Romans in reality, we then were in harmony not only with each other, but most certainly in harmony with our God. The Word of God is such a firm foundation. It never changes and sees us through every circumstance of life, even a pandemic. My final thought has to do with the hymns of our youth, well, at least my youth. We had a small youth group numbering about 10 when I was a teenager, but they were all faithful attendees. At every meeting besides a devotional, We also had a time of singing. Uh, I love singing. I like to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Fortunately, the youth leader had a strong and excellent singing voice, and we all just followed along. But I am continually surprised at how many times during the years, and especially during the pandemic, 
I found myself humming or actually singing a verse or two. Many of these hymns were composed based on scripture and life-altering God moments in the composer's life. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hushed their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. But I know whom I have persuaded, believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. How firm a foundation we have in the word of God, the verses we have memorized in our youth and other times, and the songs and hymns of worship and praise. These things together form a solid foundation which enables us to get through any challenge and trying times of our lives. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for, again, watching over us and leading and directing our ways. We thank you that that you are a great God, and that Jesus is a firm foundation, and that through your word, through the experiences that we have through you, uh, verses that we've memorized, songs that we sing, um, that through all of that, uh, you help us to recognize just how strong a foundation we have, and that as we move forward uh, through all of life's challenges, we can always lean upon you. Father, help us never to forget that, that you are always faithful. And so help us to be obedient to your call, to take the time to listen and to act and to show how much you mean in our lives. For all of this, we give you our thanks. In his name we pray. Amen. Take care and God bless you in this coming week. Once was lost, but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me.
Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Amen. Morning. It was so good of you to join us today for worship. And thank you very much to Terry Yoshiki, who was our bringing our message today in Pastor Ross's absence. Pastor Ross will be back with us, bringing the message on September the 12th. And September the 12th is a very exciting day because that's when we are back in the worship center for the first time in many, many months. So we look forward to seeing as many of you as possible, or as many of you who are comfortable, back in the worship center at uh, Whitby Baptist, 411 Gilbert Street. Um, we also would like to announce this morning, congratulations to Jeff Stevenson and Michelle McAdams, who were joined in matrimony yesterday. Their wedding took place in Bracebridge, and they begin their new life together. So we'd like to congratulate them, and of course we send best wishes to Margie and Ron and all the family in, uh, in gaining a new daughter. This past Tuesday, uh, Jennifer Gibb, met in the parking lot with some youth. Um, that's the second time they've met this summer, and uh, they're looking forward to, to getting back in the building too and being able to meet together in, uh, in a regular fashion. If you'd like to socialize and chat with some people after the service, we welcome you to join in the coffee time. Um, you can find the link for that on the update, which came out on Friday. If you don't regularly get the update and you would like to, just uh, send an email to peoplematter at whitbybaptist.ca. Whitby and also there you'll find the information on the prayer conference, which takes place every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Um, if you'd like to register for that, be a part of that prayer group, um, you can send an email to office at whitbybaptist.ca, and we'll get you set up so you can join in on the conference call. Uh, just a couple of people I'd like you to bear in mind at the moment. Uh, think particularly of Janet Spittle, uh, who is in the hospital. Continue to pray for her. And also pray for Joan McLeod, whose husband Tom went to be with the Lord. Just the uh, last couple of weeks, uh, the funeral will be by registration on Tuesday, the 31st of August. And also be with Maya and Denny. Uh, they, would travel to, they would have traveled to uh, Niagara Falls yesterday for the funeral for their brother-in-law who passed away quite suddenly just last week. So uh, continue to uh, uplift all these folk in prayer. And um, we look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Hope you have a wonderful week. And thanks again for joining us.